Good evening, Mr. Didat. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Didat asked the first question, which I would like to answer myself. He said, if you can prove me to be a liar, do so. And I would like to do this now. In 1 John 2, we read, who is a liar? It is a man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. I think that is the answer, perhaps, to the one question. And the second one question I would like to ask, the Bible, first of all, in 1 Peter 2, verse 22, says very clearly that Jesus Christ never committed any sin. You ridiculed our Lord Jesus Christ in a very terrible way. It says here, and Peter, the disciple of Jesus, he writes, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. So I would like to please uh, to ask you, it is not fair to ridicule someone with the word of God, and I would like to ask you not to do it anymore, because you are actually sinning against the Holy Spirit, who was given according to the scripture 10 days after the ascension of Jesus Christ, and not 600 years when Muhammad came. The Bible says, Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, until you will receive the Holy Spirit. The disciples never waited for 600 years, 10 days. And the Holy Spirit came and enabled them to remember everything with Jesus in his love, in his compassion, in his surrender to God, brought to them. And he gave his life to give us eternal life. Thank you. Uh, you see, what you have done, my brother, is you have made some statements. You see, when you say I ridiculed, I, when I was quoting those verses, I was make, asking and pleading, please make a note of chapter and verse. I am only quoting scripture. Now, if you construe that as a mockery, when Jesus says, you hypocrites, did he say that? You generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation, did he say that? Yes, he said so. Now, are they he would, I would assume he would say, say the same thing to many of us here. You know, what I am saying is now, was I quoting correctly? Yes, but out now, of was context. Now, was that a mockery? Out of context. Jesus Christ. What said, is the context in which he said, Woman, what have I to do with you? The context is that Jesus said, I haven't found such a faith, and it will be done as you request. I beg your pardon, you don't know your scripture, brother. I Look, I I'm quoting the, from John chapter 1, where Jesus Christ at that marriage feast at Cana. You remember, they ran short of wine. Yes. Jesus. And, sh I'm speaking. When they ran short of wine, his mother comes to him and says, Look, my son, these people have run short of wine. Do them a favor. So he said, Woman, is that what your Bible says? Yes. Woman, yes. What's wrong what have you? I to do with you? Yes. What have I to do with you? Is that what you call your mother, woman? He never, in the term of the Bible, it was not a word which was negative. It was a very huge... Uh, in in huge your word. language, do you know Hebrew? A little bit. You know, what is the word for mother in Hebrew? The word no. Um. Mm -hmm. Didn't Jesus know that word um? What does it mean? Mother. Right. Why does he call her woman? Woman does not mean in this context. Look, you are I, negative. I, I was only I, quoting you, my I brother. I quoted to you that the Bible says Jesus never sinned we with his mouth nor with action. We Muslims, we say Jesus never sinned. Right. We believe, so why we, do you believe we believe, we believe. Look, I said this is your record. I'm only presenting your record to you. I want you to tell me how does it come about that when his mother goes looking for him and he says, who is my mother and who are my brethren? Yes. Why don't you see the context? If you were that mother, if you carried him for nine months, you. Yes. And if your son tells you, who is my mother, how do you feel, my son? I ask you, how would you feel? Good question. May I answer you? Yeah, answer. Jesus says, those are my mother. Those are my brother, those who do the will of my father. And his mother did the will of the father perfectly. When she conceived the Holy Spirit, she said, thy will be done. And that was exactly the words of Christ too. So in other words, Christ actually lifted up his mother with all other people who trusted in him fully, fully and really walked with Christ and obeyed the will of God. Right, next question up. Thank you. Okay, I would like to make it very brief. Right. Maybe I can get a brief answer. 
Mr. Muhammad, you, uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad, you accuse the Christians and mankind as such of being in the sickness of having the sickness of changing names. I think that's quite true. That is, you know, we all change names here and there. And it's done, you know, by Christians with converted Muslims, perhaps, and Muslims with converted Christians. And you even said that if Muhammad would have died before 40 year, uh, of his age of 40, we wouldn't have known about this man at all. Now, I have learned that the name of Muhammad was not, not actually Muhammad, but his name was Abu Qasim. Could you please tell me what age was Muhammad? In which age was Muhammad? When he became the title Muhammad, because it is a very vital question. So if you sorry, refer now, when to he the, became the what? No, I got it. I got the when he received the title Muhammad, oh, with what? Which age? When Muhammad was born, you see, as an infant, a little baby, his grandfather Abdul Muttalib took him to the Kaaba. You know, that it was Abraham a pagan and place, yeah. his son Ishmael had Abraham and Ishmael had built. And he presented this infant child to the leaders of the Quraysh. And they asked him, what have you named him? Mm -hmm. And he said, Muhammad. He says, a very novel name. It's something new. We never had such a name before. He says, I want my grandchild to be praised throughout the world. Because Muhammad literally means the praised one. So from birth, the first name that was given to him was Muhammad. Now this expression, Abu Qasim, comes later in history. The Arabs have a system. You see, that if you are the father of a child called Qasim, so you are Abu Qasim, the father of Qasim. Mm -hmm. You are Abu Ibrahim, the father of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But you have your own name. Mm -hmm. So this is a respectful way of calling people by Abu Bakr. It's not his name. You see, but he said, now you are the father of Bakr. So this is Abul Qasim means the father of Qasim. Yeah, that was when a child was born and the name was given and this name, so Muhammad acquired that title as okay. the father of Qasim, but his name was Muhammad from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Mr. Leader. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very thankful for this talk tonight and I think, you know, I agree with you in many points, in particular that Muhammad is definitely a very great leader of his people and he has, there, he has done many lift the mic up sorry he has done many positive things i think for his people for the arabic, arabic people and i think in very many respects muhammad is a person who has brought uh, even in our days perhaps or he is he can be called even in our days one of the greatest people i must admit to this point but i think there's one question i think which is on my mind uh, I think we all admit that the Rolls Royce is the best car. Now, maybe some people, they will say it's a Mercedes. But yet, although the Rolls Royce is the best car, it cannot fly. It cannot fly. So I think our, the question must be, according to which then standard is Muhammad the greatest? What is the standard? Now, you ask the question in your talk, what was the mission of Christ? Now the mission of Christ was clearly said in the, in the gospel, you read it in all the gospels at the beginning. The mission of Christ was that he is a lamb of God who takes away the sin of mankind. In other words, the whole mission and the purpose of Christ was to bring man into unity with God. Sorry, now, uh, can you put a question? Yes, now I'm, I'm actually you know, answering his question. He brought the question, I would like to answer his question here. Yeah? And I'm coming finally to my question. And secondly, you quoted John 17, verse 1 and verse 4. And there it says, you know, Jesus did not say this particular question, passage. No, we must put these things right. He doesn't say, it is finished there. He says, the time has come to glorify me, to glorify your son. Now, that was the beginning of this, uh, the crucifixion or the being uh, taken prisoner and then being crucified. And then we read in verse 4, what you quoted, those people have got eternal life who believe and know God and Jesus Christ, his son. And then two chapters later only, when he was caught and so on, and when he was on the cross, he said the words, it is finished. In other words, he said, I have accomplished the task for which I have come. Now the question, who is the greatest? Christ came to give us life eternal. Muhammad came to do many things to deal with practical matters like you, how to use a toilet and other things. 
But the greatest question is, I think, and the greatest purpose is, how, how do you and I get reconciled with God? How do I have it? You haven't answered this question. You mentioned many things on a social, historical, political, military aspect. But the standard of God and the question of God is, how can I attain peace with God? Jesus gave the perfect answer. So Jesus is the greatest on this particular standard. What yeah. is your answer to Could that? I have your book open as it is. Yes. I want to read that verse in your Bible. The one you say, John chapter 17, 3 and 4. What does it say there? Thank you. Thank you. I'll find that. Could you, could you get your microphone? I'll bring the Bible to you. Oh. Now, this is eternal life. I read it. This is life eternal. Same thing. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Word for word, choice of words, same meaning. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Completing the work in the authorized King James Version, it says, I have finished. This is the new international version of mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. The King James Version says, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. Now, do you take exception to that translation? Um, I think we must be very clear here. As you, you must see the... No, the Bible. word finished. Yes. The word I got um, is not from... This is the King James Version of the mm -hmm. Bible, mm -hmm. which is the Bible used by pre predominantly the whole Christian world. Mm -hmm. This new international version of yours is something novel to the bulk of mankind. No, no. To the bulk, I said, to the bulk no. of Christendom. No. Look, as against the King no. James Version, mm -hmm. This is the Bible that is translated into other languages. This one, not no, that. No. The New International Version has been translated from the original text of Hebrew and Greek. What, what, not from the King no, James no, what, Version. What year was this first printed? Not uh, very recently. But tell, according tell, to the no, original no, no, just, manuscript. Just, just tell me when was this printed. I think it was in 81. 1981. I think it was 81. Right, that's three years ago. This one was first published in 1611. Yes. Yes. Right? And right. this was the only Bible available up to almost yesterday. No. Before you I had said, all almost... Letters. Please, please. I understand my simple language. I said, this was the only Bible. Look, when I was a young man, there was no other Bible that you could buy. But can we come this. back to the topic, Mr. Didat? We are right. diverting from the topic now. We are talking about the Bible, not on the text. No, the, the text, text is I, who is the greatest? I am talking, number one, you are deceiving the people by quoting something from a new Bible. No. When, look, you must tell me now that this Bible is rubbish, I should throw this away. You must tell me that. And you must tell all the Christians that DRC, they follow this. The, 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 the Zulus, they follow this. The Chanas, everybody. In Arabic, this is the only Bible available. In, in yes. Urdu, this is the only Bible available. Now, if Jesus said it is finished, that my work is finished, now does finish means finish? Will you have a look at it? Jesus says here very clearly, and you see the talk, see please, people, see the context. And this is life eternal, life eternal. He came to give life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And I have glorified thee on earth, he on earth. Glorified God. Finished, he glorified God on right, earth. Thee, of course, yeah, God. Yeah. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to I do. I have finished. Right? Let me just carry on. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So here you see already Christ has finished so far his job on earth. On no, earth. Not but so far. Shh, that so far, don't put your words inside the Bible. Does it say so far? Please read the Mr. Bible. Mr. Dida, does Keep the Bible stop here? Does the word of God stop here? Now that's finished. What about the two chapters later on where it says in the same Bible like right, yours? Right. May I just quick quote yes, this in yes, your Bible? You, yes, you go, have ahead. Here. go ahead. Where Jesus Christ says clearly on the cross, when they, when they crucified him and two others with him, on either side, one, and Jesus in the midst, 
Pilate wrote the title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now let me just find the other portion where it says here, it is finished. A little bit later, I marked it in my Bibles. Let me explain to my brethren here. You see, this word finished in John chapter yeah, 17. In 30, in chapter 17, it says finished. Again, the same word finished is used later on. Maybe after a year, maybe after six months, maybe after six weeks, same word finished is used. Now, the translators of this Bible, they can see that you can't have two times you say finished. So they change the words. Look, this is how the tricks that they have been playing. It's going on. This game is going on eternally. Never. As soon as it doesn't suit them, look, the word there is finished. The other place it says it is finished. So you can't have finished the job twice to get your pay. When you finished it, you get your pay. You can finish one job or one half no, of but job another month. If he said the job, the whole job that God had given him, for you granted him authority over all people. Now this is life eternal. That they may know you, the only true God. Not Jesus Christ. You, you. In, 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 in the old English is the singular. The only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work. I said look by finishing the work. What is, what is the difference between completing and finishing? But now the trick is that the, if you use the word finish. As the, author, as the writers of the King James Version had done. And you use again his finish. He said but he had already finished the job. Didn't he get his pay? Now that other finish, you see, is a man saying, I am dead. No. Look, that finished job is that he's dead, I'm dying. This is what he's talking about. It is finished with me. You know, something comes along like that young man, he came along with those questions and it seemed it was finished with me. Am I right? In other words, I couldn't understand, I couldn't grasp it. What am I going to tell him? You know, the whole thing is like a confusion, like a riddle, like a conundrum. So, it was finished with me. Now what finished? That means I was dead? No. In other words, you feel, man, that you are helpless. Jesus Christ same, he says, it is, if he said those words. Number one, we contest the words, but the words are in your Bible, in that Bible. I'm consistent. I'm not using one from here and one from there. Right. Here he says finished. Either when he said finished, he meant finished or he was deceiving. He wasn't speaking the truth. He's telling God, I finished the job and now do your job. Did you forget that Jesus said, when he used the word, I have finished the work which thou gavest to me. Right. That Jesus prayed to the Father and he says, and now Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the word was. In other words, here Jesus Christ says, the work of God continues in his life. Christ said, you have to resurrect me. He speaks here already. He was ready to do the will of God perfectly to the end. And the glorification of Jesus Christ took place when Jesus Christ was risen and he was alive. And you proclaim that forgiveness of sins that, has been that granted. Is the so subject, he is greater. That greatest. is the subject we are discussing on Saturday in but the just, city hall. My question was, my final question is on this point. No, no, Isn't Jesus Christ the greatest because he gives eternal life? He says, he says, that there is somebody coming after me? No. no now you say no. You say now you say it's the Holy Spirit. Now this is what it means now. You want to debate with me. And if you want to debate with me, the privilege is yours. You see, if you want to debate any subject, all that I've been dealing with so far, all the subjects in the future, it would be your privilege, your privilege. I'll gi I'm giving you, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm giving you the privilege of organizing a meeting you organize a meeting here in Cape Town on any subject, whether on the crucifixion, whether Jesus is God, whether the spirit of truth is Muhammad or the Holy Ghost, anything, you organize the meeting and we, I will come along and address that meeting. Then you can, we can have a debate. But here is now question time and I say finished is finished. When the man said he finished it and he's asking his reward. Right? So unless again he's speaking with the tongue in his cheek. Sorry, but I just would like to justify one thing. Um, you didn't say that he read more epistles or wrote more epistles. But I put it down here. You said grace, the teaching of grace is Pauline. 
not from the others. That's what you said. Is it correct? So, and I think uh, that is, according to scripture, not correct. Because in 1 Peter, we read very clearly that Peter writes here in 1 Peter 1 verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into the living hope um, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, etc. Here very clearly in this whole passage, and I would like to encourage all the whole audience to read the letters of Peter, who was one of the closest of Jesus' followers, as well as the letters of John. And very clearly, you take the time tonight, very clearly you will find that grace is expounded there. Grace comes through Jesus Christ by faith which you put into it. It's not just Pauline. Just this, just, is, just, this is the trouble. You see, I said any time we have it, a conflict with our Christian brethren, it's either Paul, 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 now Peter. I want to know what does Jesus say? You see, this is the problem. Is I said, look, Jesus says, I am talking about your Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, you listening brother, you can't be listening while you're turning the pages, please. The human mind can't do two things at the same time. Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no heaven for you, unless you are better than the Jew. And how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? So now you say the law is nailed to the cross. I ask you, are you circumcised? You say no. I'm talking about the generality of Christendom. Maybe for constriction or some other reason, sickness, you might have been circumcised. But as religiously, are you circumcised? I'm asking you, are you circumcised? I, I don't think you know I have to answer this question. Right, you no, the thing is you are not circumcised. <laughs> the Christian says he is not circumcised he because he is not bound by the law. He is not bound by the law. I say, where did you get that? So he's gonna quote Corinthians and Philippians and Galatians oh. and Peter and James. I say, what does your Jesus say? Jesus says, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So can't you see we are at loggerheads because I am following Jesus, the master. Whatever the master says, we say we agree, we accept. Because the master was teaching nothing other than Islam, keep the laws and the commandments, believe in God. And this is what he told a Jew very beautifully. A learned man of the Jew comes to Jesus and he says, good master, what good thing must I do to gain eternal life? For Jannah, heaven, what must I do? So Jesus says, why callest thou me good? There is none good except one, that is God. He doesn't deserve to be called even good according to him. There is only one good, that is God. But, but, are you listening brother? But, if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Salvation comes by keeping the laws and the commandments. He says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. I want to know whether you are following him. Are you? Yes. You are. You eat the pig? You eat pigs? Yes. Right. Did Jesus eat the pig? No. no. He destroyed 2,000 pigs. But the Christian them, they are all pig eaters now. And you say you are following him. Jesus was circumcised. Was he? You follow him? Are you circumcised? He says, no. You say you are following him. You see, you are accepting words with words. Mr. Didat, I, th I think we split hairs here. Jesus made wine. Do you drink wine? Jesus drank wine. Did you, do you drink wine? There was no law. Listen, Mr. Didat, let's the be fair. Let's be fair. We don't split hairs. No, no, you, you, Look, you are to follow him. Mr. Didat, I think we must be fair here. And I think time is running out. Time and is running out. You have very got a very good point when you say here, for I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds or surpasses that of the Pharisees, who were the most religious and the most sort of people. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, who those who keep the law to the dot, no one else. Like Mr. Didat, he is the most perfect Muslim perhaps in the country. But Jesus says, if you surpass your righteousness, you must surpass the righteousness. Where, how can you surpass the righteousness? The young man you quoted now, he said, keep the law. He said, the young man said, but I'm perfect. I'm like the Pharisees, I have kept everything. What did Jesus say? There is something in your heart which is not right. 
that's your wealth. And he said, sell these wealth and then, and come and follow me. That is, to follow Jesus, how to become more than the Pharisees, how to, be, how to become righteous, to follow Jesus. Thank you. Thank he, you. he explained to the Christians, his followers, how to be better than the Jew. He just didn't leave it in the air, making beautiful statements. He said, when you fast, now his disciples, the Christians, if they are his followers, when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do. How you can be better than the Jew? The Jew was fasting, he was praying, he was giving charity, he was straight jacketing his life, but you are supposed to be better than that. Which way? Jesus explains. He said, when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do. They do not wash their faces and they don't brush their hair. Who the Jews? To be seen of men. In other words, with muck in their eyes. I think you better tell this young man to sit down, please. Yes, please. Tell him to sit down. We had enough of him already. Yeah. With muck in their eyes, you know, gloomy feeling. He said, what's wrong, uncle? So I said, I'm fasting. See, it leaves the impression that Mr. Didat is a very pious religious man. Out of season and in season he's fasting. So he says, no, 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 you, when you fast, you must wash your face and brush your hair of a happy countenance. Nobody knows that you're fasting because you're fasting for the love of God. So you can be better than the Jew. By doing that, but on a higher level. The Jews, when they committed adultery, they were guilty. You, my followers, Jesus says, if the thought goes through your mind, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. So no beauty contest for you, no long leg contest for you. This is what he means, better than the Jew. You keep the laws, but on a higher level. When you give charity, the Jews made a big noise. See, you know, so and so, his wife was in hospital, childbirth and he couldn't bail her out I had to help him with 250 rands I tell the whole world you know I helped him I helped her brother 250 rands I gave so I'm boosting my ego at his expense so Jesus says no when you give what your left hand gives your right hand mustn't know can you see so he's explaining to you every step how you can be better than the Jew not by not keeping the laws and the commandments but by keeping the laws and the commandments on a higher spiritual level which the Christian is only accepting words by words. He said, you accept, you follow him? He said, I follow him. I said, which way are you following him? You don't look like him. You don't behave like him. You, your diet is not like his. In everything, he is just the opposite of what you have been doing. If he comes along in his second coming, I'm telling our Christian brethren, in the free state, and if they recognize him, what are they going to do with him? Take him home and a pig on the spit, they're going to praise it for him. He's going to vomit. Can you see? So in other words, look, he will be most uncomfortable with you. But if he comes to my house, any Muslim home, you know, my wife will be like his mother. My children will be like his brothers and sisters, if he had them. He'll be more at home with me hygienically. He'll be more like with me than with that, our Mr. Cunningham and the pot, you remember? You see, Jesus will be wanting that can, can of water. You, won't, you haven't got it? Look, he will be more at home with us than with you. It is we who are following his teachings, not the Christians. Because you quoted again Peter, you quote Paul and Paul and Paul. I said, what did Jesus say? Please, for goodness sake, why didn't you tell me this is what Jesus said? Jesus said, the work is finished and the work is finished. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Didas. First of all, I would like to get an invitation when you get your doctorate, because you invent a few new words. I think it would be quite interesting to get you know, to the ceremony when you get you know, your doctorate, because you invent a few new words. Thank you. Um, you mentioned a few things tonight concerning spirits. You made some very strong statements here that a, a spirit cannot eat, cannot be seen, etc. Now, I would like to refer the audience and yourself to Surah 19, verse 17, the Surah of Mary, here we see, he read, we sent unto her our spirit, and it assumed for her the likeness of a prophet, uh, of, of a perfect man. In other words, we read here clearly that God sent a spirit, and it appeared in the likeness of a man. 
In other words, this man was seen, this man was heard, and most probably even could have been touched. We are not told about that. But you told us many fairy tales. We can assume this also, I think, tonight. And so I think, you know, we must ask the question. Sorry. Do we? Yeah, the question. We ask the question. Do we believe the Quran as... Or do you believe the Quran as your guidance, as revelation? Then don't talk in this way about the spirits and about the resurrected Christ. Then we must also ask the question, whom do we give more authority? A word of a man or a word of Jibreel, a word of an angel? It says in the Holy Quran, or it says in the Bible, when Jesus was risen, the, tomb was the stone was rolled away from the tomb. Mary Magdalene, she saw an angel inside, and the angel said, He is risen. Do you believe more an angel or a woman who comes and tells the people, He is alive? Right, thank you. Now, if you know your Bible, and it seems that you know your Bible too well, you Shh. read in your Bible that the disciples of John came to Jesus to ask him are you the one that cometh or do we seek or wait for another that word disciples of John in your original Greek Bible which I take you have it you re read there the Greek word there is agilos and agilos means angels this is in the Scofield's Bible if you want to have a look the word there in Greek is agilos and agilos means angels so, but you, when you're translators, when you're translating for the disciples of John, you don't say the angels of John. What do you say? The disciples of John. When it suits you that the person is angelic, you say, ah, you are an angel. So when it suits you, you translate angel as an angel, and when it suits you, you translate angel as disciples. So who was this inside? Does Mary say that this creature had wings? This angel had wings. When you quoted the Quran, you said that the person that came, the angel came to her as a perfect man, a man in all respects. In other words, in appearance. It appeared to her like a man. If he appeared like an electromagnetic wave, can you imagine what would have happened to Mary? If he appeared like an elephant, you know what would have happened to her? So the natural thing God Almighty does is he when he is sending his message to anybody, he makes that person to receive. So he appeared as a man, the angels can appear as man, but Jesus Christ is proving to the contrary. He is telling that I am not what you are thinking. He says a spirit has no flesh and bones. You are thinking that I am a spirit. He said I am not that, because if I was, I wouldn't have this. Simple logic. He's proving to the end, he's eating food. To prove what? That I'm the same fellow man, what's wrong with you? I'm not that apparition. You asked me some questions, man. I, I didn't ask you any question, I'm yes. telling you. You just asked me, you know, he this ate food. Is, I'm he? telling you this, this is my statement to you. He it's had a glorified a body as such, he could eat, but he didn't have to eat. Uh, brother, I take it you know the rhetorical question, right? That was a rhetorical question, many things. First of all, I would like to apologize. Um, I don't think it's fair, you know, to interrupt. But I must admit, certain things, you know, which were said tonight, go really in my heart and move my emotions, so that I can perhaps cry, because I feel very much hurt, because my word of God and Jesus Christ is torn actually into the dirt. Um, so sorry when I interrupted. Um, you mentioned two people during the address this evening, Joshua McDowell, with whom you had a symposium about three years ago on the 30th I believe 81 on the same topic and you advertised quite a few uh, you advertised this tape and I would like to uh, encourage the audience to get hold of this tape and to listen to the fool uh, uh, Joshua McDowell as you put it to the audience this evening to listen to the sight of the fool Joshua McDowell who clearly explained to the people in Durban why Jesus Christ was crucified then I would like just at the end quote from you the verse which you recited to us in Arabic in English and that is Surah 457 58 and because of their saying 
we slew the Messiah, Jesus, of, uh, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger, they slew him not, nor crucified, but it appeared unto, uh, so unto them. The word crucified is even used in the Quran. And lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no acknowledged, no knowledge thereof, save pursuit of conjecture. Right. Sorry. They slew him not of, for certain, but Allah took him up to himself. Now, Mr. Dita, you make the statement, no one was crucified. Someone else was crucified instead of Jesus. That is Islamic teaching. And I think that is my question. Why do you actually tell people something about the Christian faith and destroy the Bible and you don't get back to your Quran? I, I would assume if I would be a Muslim, I would be utterly disappointed for this evening because I didn't get anything from this book, from this book. From this book, I got something distorted, but nothing from that. Could Sorry. you please answer this? Thank you. I started with the verse which we have just finished off with. وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحِ And they said in boast that they killed Christ Jesus, Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah. Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of God. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا سَلَبُوهُ And they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. Brother, وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ But it was made to appear to them so. When did I say somebody was substituted? Did I say anything like that? Did I say somebody else was put on his place? I said, whatever you are thinking, since you say you have your authorities, witnesses, eyewitnesses and your witnesses to the happenings, I said, let us examine your witnesses. This is the most sensible legal thing that people do in any civilized country. When you make a claim, anybody makes a claim, and if there is a counterclaim, you go to court and you present your case, and your witness is being cross-examined to prove whether he's speaking the truth or false. And that is actually what I did. I used your witnesses, your witnesses from your book, and showed you that whatever you are imagining didn't happen. And that's my case. I close my case. Now, either you have to refute me by telling me that a spirit has flesh and bones. Jesus said the spirit has no flesh and bones. And these resurrected bodies eat broiled fish and honeycomb. Tell me. I'm prepared to listen to you. But nobody has come forward yet. You keep on talking about Josh McDowell now. You're talking about some tapes. What has that got to do with this meeting tonight? You know, it's an amazing situation. You are personally present here. What do you want to know about Josh McDowell, his lecture, what he said and what he did? What has that got to do with this meeting? You're talking about the tape. You know, you're confusing the people. They don't know what you're talking about. You, you know, put forth your claim. What is it? What do you want? You want Josh McDowell's tape? I said, look, we don't stop them. You go and write to John Gilchrist, your partner in Benoni. He will give it to you. Why do you want it from me? What is this Josh McDowell has to got to do with your question time now? Nothing. So it's an amazing thing, you know, that you're listening for one and a half hour and there is not a thing that you can challenge me on to say that I have made a misstatement and this is wrong and prove your point. We thank everybody for having My come. dear brothers and sisters, look, here is a proof. Here is a proof. What you have to do, you master that little booklet. And I tell you, there isn't a Christian born who can stand before you. You'll find sick people. You know, they say they're born again and they'll keep on you try talking to the wall. Don't talk to the wall. The ordinary people, Allah says, Minhumul Mu'minuna, there are good people among them. Talk to them, invite them for tea, talk to them, show them the Quran, reason with them, and inshallah you'll be able to do the job. The professionals, you leave them to me at meetings like these. Like, share, and subscribe to create awareness. We are also available on Facebook, Google, and Twitter, and PalTalk.